Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'm back at the fundamental of electronics. The objective of this video is to discuss what is actually a capacitor. What are the role of a capacitor in a circuit? And last but not least, we are going to discuss how can we actually determine the capacitor value from the codes on its body. This will be the part one series discussion on capacitor. Under fundamental, we have resistor, which I have discussed on the previous video. So take a look on those video under the description for all the fundamental electronics discussion. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, feel free to give me some comment so that the quality of this channel can be further improved. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Let's start by the definition of capacitor. What is actually a capacitor? A capacitor is a device that stores electrical energy in an electric field by virtue of accumulating electric charge on two closed surfaces insulated from each other. Okay, so this sentence is well explained by this diagram here. In this diagram, you can see that these are two conductors. Conductor 1 having a higher potential as compared to conductor 2. And because of the potential difference, electric field actually generate. And once you generate this electric field, we can actually accumulate the electric charge. So this is the definition on this capacitor over here, which is illustrated by this line here. It is a cap this is a passive electronics component with two terminal. Okay, so this diagram here shows different types of capacitor. Over here, what does we mean two terminal? Okay, you can see from here, this is a capacitor. They actually have one, two, two terminals. So this is what this sentence means. The symbol of capacitor, okay, we have actually mainly three different types. One is called a fixed capacitor, which means that the capacitor value is unchanged. They are all fixed at this particular value. So therefore, we call this under fixed capacitor. Another symbol is actually called a polarized capacitor. It is actually quite similar with fixed capacitor, which means that the capacitor value is also remain the same. However, we need to take care on the polarized, which means that this form of capacitor, we have the plus and minus. And when we actually connect them into the circuit, we must be very careful how we actually connect the plus and minus onto the circuit. If we do it wrongly, for example, we do the interchange of the plus and minus, a mini explosion may happen. So be very careful when you actually deal with this polarized capacitor. Next, we have this variable capacitor. Okay, as the name implies, variable means that the value of the capacitor can be very Typically, they have a range. Okay, so this is all the symbol of capacitor. Okay, let's take a simple look on this diagram to understand okay, what is the key role of capacitor. Okay, so from this diagram here, you can see that at the input, okay, the current actually varies quite drastically. Okay, so basically this current, they vary quite drastically into the input of the capacitor. So after the capacitor, you can see that the current actually is moved out. So in short, which means that at the input of the capacitor, okay, we can have a huge varies of currents. But however, after passing through the capacitor, you can see that the current is typically smoothed out. So this is the key purpose of capacitor. Okay, we want to control okay, at the input, for example, okay, we have high up and down of current but after passing through the capacitor we have almost like a dc value of current okay which means that it is actually quite stable so this is what we want to achieve from capacitor in short 
Let me further explain how capacitor actually work. So over here in this diagram here, for example, this is the power source. Typically, let's say this power source generate a 5 volt. And 5 volt basically has a current that generate. And over here, this is a circuit. Okay, let's say this is a circuit to power up just a simple LED, for example, for this case here. So when we actually has a power source and current generate, and this current actually power up the circuit, and therefore the LED actually light up. Okay, so basically, these are basically circuit without capacitor. So I'm going to explain the difference when we actually include the capacitor. But over here, it's just a very simple circuit. The power source generate a 5 volt, they generate a current, and the current actually power up the circuit, and therefore the LED light up. So basically, this is uh, nothing changed, and therefore this thing works normally as a so-called a circuit. So next, what happened here is basically, if let's say somehow the power source increased in terms of voltage, so instead of 5 volt, the voltage increased to 10 volt. And happen here, this the current also will be increased because the voltage increased, the current also increased, and this high current may kill the circuit. So the LED initially may light up, but after that, because of the high current, it killed the whole circuit. And what happened here is basically the LED will not be able to light up. So you see the effect, if the power source actually changed or increased for this case here, you can see that the high current may kill the circuit and this resulting in a failure of the circuit because the LED managed to light up just for a while after that, it failed to light up anymore. And basically this is an issue when we actually has a power source that cannot be stable at 5 volt. And under extreme case, let's say 10 volt, this will effectively kill the circuit because of a high current. Next, let's say now, okay, I actually has a lower power source. Let's say my power source now is 1 volt. So what happened here is basically because of low voltage, the current also typically will be reduced drastically. And what happened here is basically for this case, the current is not enough to drive the circuit. And therefore, because of the limitation of the current, the LED is not able to light up. Early on, you see that when we actually has a power source of 10 volt, it kills our circuit. But now when the power source reduces, okay, because they can't generate enough current to power up my circuit, and therefore, my LED is not able to light up. So next, okay, I'm going to explain okay, what is the role of a capacitor. Okay, by having this capacitor over here, I can always ensure the L the circuit or this LED is able to light up continuously. Okay, again, there will be a power source of 5 volt. So let's say very early day that we actually power up, the power source actually go and charge up the capacitor. Okay, so you can imagine this. Basically, the power source actually charge up the capacitor. So the capacitor, for example, let's say it come from 0, 0 0.1 volt, 0 0.2, etc. until 5 volt. Finally, it is ready. Then they will generate a fixed current to power up the circuit. And therefore, you can see that the LED loud is actually lighted up. So basically, this is under this case when it's actually 5 volt. Again, okay, let's understand what if it become 10 volt. Okay, earlier on, without the capacitor, you see that when they actually has a 10 volt, it actually effectively kill the circuit. But what happened here is basically when it's actually 10 volt, okay, which means that the current also increased, this higher amount of current is actually used to charge up the capacitor for this case here. However, if you still remember, okay, the role of a capacitor actually regulate the current and they actually deliver still the same amount of current to power up the circuit. So from here, you will not be able to see the effect of higher voltage that kill the circuit. But what happened here is basically the higher power source over here, they charge up the capacitor faster, but they do not really kill the circuit. So this is the role of a capacitor. So at this extreme case, when the power source increased, let's say double to 10 volt, okay, so instead of killing the circuit, this higher power source actually charge up the capacitor faster and then the capacitor also discharge the current to power up the circuit and therefore you can see that the LED light actually managed to light up over here. So this is the effect when we actually has a capacitor. So next again, we also need to consider when the power source limit to one volt for example for this case. 
due to certain reason, okay, somehow the voltage dim to one volt for a quick instant. Okay, and therefore, this voltage that generate up, basically they has a lower current. Again, probably they will take a longer time to charge up the capacitor. But because the capacitor already has the store charge and the capacitor can re so-called discharge the amount of current that is required to power up the circuit. And therefore, the LED light will be still able to light out. With this over here, you can see that even the power source, the voltage dropped to one volt. Okay, however, because of the capacitor, my circuit can be still work as normal. Okay, the circuit will kill off after all the charge in the capacitor is so-called utilized. However, as long as they have the charge, they will be able to sustain the circuit. So imagine the capacitor can be like a little battery. They store the charge and because of emergency, they can still discharge the current and top up onto the circuit and therefore the circuit will be able still to light out. So hopefully this little explanation allow you to understand how capacitor actually work in a circuit. So next, let's discuss on the different types of capacitor before we go into how can we determine the capacitor value from the codes. Okay, capacitor are widely used in electrical and electronic circuit. So you open up any device, electronics device, you definitely see all types of capacitor. So in short, there are actually two main commonly used capacitor. So one is we call the ceramic capacitor. So the value is typically from a few picofarad to all the way maximum to 0 0.1 microfarads. Okay, so this is what we call the fixed capacitor. Okay, they don't have any polarization. There's no plus and minus, which means that if I switch, it's somehow okay. I will not worry about whether this capacitor will blow up. But for this electrolytic capacitor, I need to be a little bit concerned because they are actually polarized. Remember, I told you that this plus and minus, I need to be very carefully to place them under the circuit. If not, a mini explosion may happen. And this type of capacitor, typically they are above one microfarad and they can actually store more charge in short. Okay, so how can we actually determine the value of the capacitor? Basically will be the discussion on these slides here. How can we actually determine the capacitor value from the code that is embedded onto the body? Okay, typically for a capacitor, for example, in this diagram here, you can see that they have a code of 104. So what does 104 means? Okay, let's take a quick look on this so-called slides here in order to understand better. A three-digit number is print on the ceramic capacitor. For example, for this case, it's 104. Okay, the first two digits give the value, while the third digit is the multiplier in picofarad. Okay, let's do this example so that we are able to fully understand. For example, the body mentioned 104, so this 104. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier on, the first two digits actually give the value. So basically, this is the two value here. While the third one is actually the multiplier, so this is 10. So the third value, I just put it 10 to the power of 4. So 10 to the power of 4, I can actually break them into 10 times 10 to the power of 3. So this is actually so-called mini. They cancel effect, they become 100 narrow farad. You can see here, 10 times 10, which is 100. This effect, I actually reduce to narrow farad. So basically, this is how we can actually obtain the capacitor value from the body of a capacitor. The 104, the first two indicate the value, which is remain intact over here. For the third one actually is the multiplier. So this 10 multiplier by 4, okay, basically they are in a function of picofarad. So what happened is basically I will break them into two parts, 10 times um, 10 to power 3. This 10 to power 3, I actually reduce them into narrow farad. How on the other side will be 10 times 10, which is 100 nanofarad. So hopefully this is clear. But let me give you another example. For example, I have a code of 472 okay, that is embedded onto the capacitor body. Okay, Again, the first two indicate the value. So this is 47. The third one is actually the multiplier. So basically times 10 to the power 2 picofarad here. Okay, so because this is picofarad, okay, I no need to worry. So basically what happened here is basically this is 4700 picofarad, which is written over here. Okay, I can rearrange this into narrow farad. Okay, so you need to shift 3, 1, 2, 3, and this will be 4.7 narrow farad. So in 
this video here, I have quickly explained what is actually the capacitor and what is the role of a capacitor in a circuit. And last but not least, I have gone through this, how we can actually obtain the capacitor value from the code that is embedded onto the body of the capacitor. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. See you guys.